All right, folks, so here we have a new battery. It is the Greener Power. Greener Power? I'm not sure how you say that, but it's a lithium iron phosphate 4 battery. It is uh, 100 amp hours, which is 1,280 watt hours, and this is a 12.8 uh, volt battery. Here it says lithium iron uh, phosphate deep cycle battery. You can see the website or URL for Greener Power right here, then a contact uh, email address, and the provider, Shenzhen Greener Power Technology Company Limited, made in China. Here it's got some accreditations and logos. I'm not 100% sure what they mean, but they look good. Let's see what else we have on this battery. The battery has a pretty strong ABS case, has a logo on the top, and it has positive and negative terminals and handy carrying handles. Before we get too far into this uh, review, I did want to mention that I was contacted by the folks at Greener uh, Power and they asked if I would do a video review of this battery. I like reviewing batteries and I like making videos, so of course I said yes, they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. The battery did come with these terminal post bolts. Each one of these has a washer and a lock washer that is attached to them. And they were pretty easy to connect. They are M8 bolts. Uh, they also came with a spare set of M8 bolts and then these rubber caps. Now you take these rubber caps and you put them on top of these bolts once you have everything uh, installed and connected. They do offer some protection in case something would fall on the battery to protect against short circuiting. The battery did come with this flyer, and you can see they have a variety of offerings here. On the back of the battery is some Q&A stuff that you can read in case you have any questions. Uh, the answers would be provided here. And then it came with this, which is referred to as a service card. And you can put your start date and your order ID on here so you have a handy reference. Here's your email for customer support. They say 100% satisfying problem solving, customer technical service, response within 24 hours, and contact us for extended, uh, contact us to extend for five years warranty. Here's some of the use cases and some tips for using your battery. Install some gloves. They ship at 30 to 50% capacity. Mine did and I had to charge it up. And then it said to use a suitable charger. Uh, this is a pretty basic instruction manual comp compared to some of the other batteries that we reviewed on the channel, but it does have all your pertinent information. We're going to run through some of this real quick. This battery feels like it's a little bit on the small side. It's 10.2 inches in width, 8.3 inches tall, and 6.6 .6 inches deep. And then here it says the weight is 27.5 pounds, and that feels about right. Terminal is M8. Our nominal voltage is 12.8, and we'll check that when we do our capacity test. Uh, normal capacity, 100 amp hours. And then here it says capacity at 20 amps. It should run for 300 minutes, which is 5 hours. Energy is 1,280 watts. Resistance is less than 10 mega ohms. And then our self-discharge is about 3% a month. Cells are prismatic. Prismatic cells mean they're kind of square-shaped as opposed to patch cell, uh, pouch cells. And then here's where we're interested in charge performance. It says recommend charge current 20 amps. I did charge mine at 30. Maximum charge current 100 amp hours. Now the longer uh, you charge your batteries at higher amperages, the hotter or the warmer the battery gets, which does cause internal resistance, which does degrade your battery's lifespan. Recommend charge voltage 14.6. That's about what we used. BMS charge cutoff voltage, uh, here it says less than 14.6 or 3.65 per cell. And that means that once the cells hit that, the BMS will stop charging them. Maximum batteries in connection, it says four parallel, four series, so that would be 12 batteries in total. Over here on discharge performance, it says maximum continuous discharge current, 100 amp hours. Peak is 200 amp hours at three seconds. Our uh, BMS uh, discharge cutoff current is 300 amps plus or minus 10 amps at 31 milliseconds. So that's if you have like a surge protect, surge uh, draw or load or something like that. BMS discharge cutoff voltage, 10 volts. So that's what we will run our capacity test at. And short circuit protection, here it says uh, 200 to 600 microseconds. Uh, that's really it. Like I said, the instructions are a little bit limited, but there may be more detail on the website. Okay, for this test, we are going to use the West Mountain Radio CBA-4. 
what this does is connects to my computer and it connects to the battery and it creates a load and then we can measure the load over time to find out how much capacity is in our battery. Okay, we have the positive and negative terminals of our battery connected to this 10 gauge wire, which comes down through these Anderson power poles and into our analyzer. Let's go ahead and start the test. <clears throat> okay, here's the West Mountain software that we use for this test. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up here and I'm gonna go to test and then pick new test. All right, then I get this new test dialog here. And a couple of things that we wanna do over on the right hand side, we wanna detect our battery. You can see I already have it set for lithium iron phosphate four. It's reading a battery voltage of 14.6, which makes sense because I just took this thing off the charger. And for some reason it's detecting five cells. We're gonna just let it go. I don't think there's five cells in there, but who knows. And then over here for the discharge test, we have a cutoff voltage that's set for 12.5. I believe in the instructions it said the cutoff voltage was 10 volts. So we're gonna adjust our test for that. And then we are going to draw 10 amps per hour. This is a 100 watt, uh, amp hour battery. The test should take 10 hours. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the start button. It said you have selected a target voltage that is less than the minimum recommended discharge voltage for a battery of this type. The recommended voltage is 12.5. We always do it at 10. And now the test is beginning. And you can see quickly the charge voltage of 14.6 quickly drops when under load, but this is to be expected with this battery. Okay, so here are our test results, and the test ran for about 10 hours and 10 minutes, and uh, it looks pretty good. There's a couple things to note here in the middle of the test. We did see some bouncing around with voltage. I don't know if that was a connector or if the CBA was getting warm or something, but I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, one thing I'll notice is it starts to roll off pretty good right around here. And two things that we take a look at when we do these types of tests are when it goes below the 12 volt mark. And right around here, that was around 96 amp hours. And so that's good. We would like it to be a little bit better, but that's uh, pretty good stuff. And then uh, when we get to the 100 amp hour mark right around here, we are right around... 11.052 uh, volts and when we hit 11 volts we are just over 100 amp hours overall like i said this is uh, more than acceptable and we're going to consider it a pass here's the product web page for the battery i'll include a link to this below and you can take a look at it at your leisure anyhow when you take a look at this you can see it's the same battery 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and you can pick this baby up for 219 dollars if you got amazon prime and that includes free delivery. Okay, so here we have the greener power battery connected with these heavy cables to our pure sine wave inverter. We have an EEV blog multimeter and a Kiwitz multimeter. One is monitoring the battery voltage at the inverter input. The other is measuring the amperage coming out of the battery. We're going to use the heat gun to run this particular test. You can see the voltage drop on the multimeter and you can see we are pulling about 58 amps out of the battery, around 600 watts. Now I'm putting it on high power. The voltage tag goes down to about 11.7 volts. We're pulling 126 amps, which is over the rated capacity and around 1250 watts. Let's get the space heater and set that up. Okay, we have the space heater set up into the Kumin watt meter, and I plugged the heat gun directly into the inverter, so that's going to bypass our Kumin watt meter readings. But you can see the amperage is starting to climb on the Kai Wheats multimeter, and we are closing in on around 500 watts and around 55 amps coming out of the battery. Oh, now it's up to 65. What I want to do now is I'm going to turn on the heat gun to put additional load and we should see what the battery does with more than its rated output capacity. And so right now we're pulling about 155 amps and it does this without any problem or real strain on the battery. I wouldn't recommend running it like this a lot, but I think it's okay for burst. Now when I turn it on high, my inverter fails because the drain was just too high for the inverter to handle. It had nothing to do with the battery. I'm going to reset it and we're going to start back up. And right now we are pulling around 125 
amps. Turning the space heater back on, we'll combine them back together, and we are between 155 and 160. I'm going to call this a pass. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I want to thank Greener Power for sending me this battery. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everyone.